the past five years, the world witnessed a slowdown of uh, world trade. It more or less indicates that there is something wrong with the world trade regime in which the WTO plays a significant role. Participants of this conference discuss wide range uh, issues related to uh, you know, uh, trade, international trade and investment, such as the relationship between G20 and the WTO, uh, multilateralism and the regionalism, and uh, you know, how to harness in trade and investment policy coherence. And of course, how to re-energize the global trade growth. Uh, now we have in the Director General of WTO, Mr. Azarido, to give us a keynote speech. It's a, a little bit special, you know. Uh, keynote speech is usually arranged at the beginning of the conference, <laughs> but uh, now we we have a uh, you know separate separate keynote speech sessions. Please, yeah. Thank you. So thank thank you very very much. I um, you know the keynotes are the key, right? But you can. You can use the key to open or to close, so, <laughs> yes. so we're yeah. closing. <laughs> so, um, no, but I'm very happy. I'm very happy to be here with you um, uh, for many reasons. Um, first of all, I heard that you had a very good discussion. Um, of course, I expect to get a better uh, briefing uh, down the road about uh, everything that was discussed here. I'm very, very interested in listening to what you have to say. Um, I want to thank uh, our friends at IDEAS uh, and the ICTSD uh, for organizing uh, the event. Um, and I would like to thank also the T20 and, and the participants and the partners uh, for spearheading this initiative. Um, I think that this meeting um, is particularly welcome given the juncture that we are in at the WTO right now. Um, speaking a little, a little bit about the economic context of where we are, um, trade has been hit hard uh, lately uh, by low global demand. Um, developed countries are coming out of recession only very, very slowly. Um, and the emerging economies that were driving uh, the, the global uh, economy are now uh, maturing uh, to some extent. So we do need uh, to take uh, active actions uh, to get trade going uh, and to take, of course, uh, down barriers and to strike new agreements, which is very tough, for, as all of you know. Uh, much of the focus uh, in the recent years have been on bilateral or regional trade initiatives, such as TTIP and TPP. And I know uh, that the relationship uh, between these initiatives and the multilateral trading system has been on your agenda uh, today. I know that you discussed that. And as you know, these agreements have long coexisted uh, with the WTO. Uh, in my view, uh, they're very positive and they can deliver significant economic gains. Um, but clearly, a patchwork uh, of overlapping uh, trade regulations, especially where you don't have uh, multilateral disciplines um, is less efficient uh, than global uh, rules. Um, there is no doubt that the private sector has a clear preference for a multilateral approach where it can be achieved. Um, some topics uh, like domestic support in agriculture or uh, fishery subsidies, they can only be fully or properly uh, addressed multilaterally. That's, that's just the nature of the negotiation. So we need to ensure uh, that trade uh, is working well at all levels, bilaterally, regionally, multilaterally, and we here at the WTO need to make as full a contribution as we can. Um, over the last uh, two and a half years, uh, the WTO has started to deliver uh, new trade agreements, uh, which are bringing 
very significant results. Uh, in 2013, at the Ministerial Conference in Bali, uh, we delivered the Trade Facilitation Agreement. It was the first um, uh, WTO multilateral agreement since its inception 20 years ago. Uh, then in 2015 in Nairobi, uh, members agreed to abolish uh, the export subsidies for agriculture. Uh, it was the biggest reform in agricultural rules uh, also for 20 years. Um, also in Nairobi, uh, some members uh, struck a deal to expand the WTO's information technology agreement. And that was the first tariff cutting deal in the WTO for 19 years. So we're talking about very long spans of time with nothing essentially happen. Um, and also other important decisions were taken to help the least developed countries uh, integrate into trade flows, particularly in cotton. Um, we did get a permanent solution. We, we agreed to find a permanent solution for the public stock holding programs uh, and to develop a special safeguard mechanism to help deal with imports uh, or surges of food um, products that can harm domestic production. So all of these are very important for the global economy and they send an important signal about the health of the trading system itself. And after uh, a prolonged period where little progress uh, was made in global trade talks, uh, these results are making people sit and take notice. I think uh, there has been a resurgence uh, in interest in our work. Uh, we are seeing this at the G20. Uh, and at the last two meetings of the two G20 leaders, uh, the discussion on trade was very lively, very, very dynamic, very interesting. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to thank China uh, for the leadership that it's taken in the G20. Um, I think that the emphasis on that, that China has put on trade and investment um, uh, reflects precisely uh, the country's long, uh, uh, long-standing and strong uh, commitment to the multilateral trading system. Um, this is also clear here in Geneva, where the mission uh, of China is active and a constructive participant across all areas of work in the WTO. Uh, we are also seeing uh, renewed interest in other fora. Uh, at Davos, for example, this year, uh, there was a, a, a very significant change in the positivity um, and engagement uh, towards the work here in Geneva. Uh, the same was true at the APEC meeting of ministers uh, last month and at the OECD uh, ministerial meeting just last week. Uh, and all this is very positive. I think we have to build on this momentum uh, to re-energize the work here in the WTO. And if we look ahead, I think we have two major tasks ahead of us. The first one is to implement what we have already agreed. So it doesn't make any sense to agree on things if you don't implement. So that's a very important um, element. The second one is that we need to continue to deliver trade deals. Uh, we cannot stop where we are. We have to try to keep delivering as much as we can and as constantly and frequently as we can. Now, that's precisely what WTO members are discussing now uh, here in Geneva. And as uh, that discussion uh, shapes up, I think it's important that we seek uh, the different views uh, from different stakeholders to enrich uh, the debate here and, frankly, also to spark new ideas. We, we miss new ideas and good ideas at this point in time. We have general conversations about all these very interesting and relevant topics, mm -hmm. but ideas, really good ideas about what to do in each one of them that we don't have. And that's how um, I think you can help. Just um, when was this? Uh, last week, uh, we held uh, the trade dialogues at the request of uh, the private sector. So we had here some 60 uh, business leaders uh, from small and big companies, from developed and developing um, countries, uh, from a range of sectors. It was not concentrated in one sector, from a range of sectors. They all discussed uh, the challenges that they face in conducting uh, trade operations. And they also imagined how the WTO can help them deal with all these obstacles. Now, overall, there were some very, very interesting exchanges. And I will come back 
to this in a moment. And um, as usual, and as you all know, of course, uh, it is WTO members who will decide if any of those ideas are going to go forward or not. They are, they are the ones um, who will uh, pick up uh, on those ideas or not. But the level of the debate itself was very good, and I think I'm very happy with that. It provided very valuable food for thought. So the B20 and the G20s, which is the G20s, as you know, business coalition, uh, played a key role in that meeting. Uh, it was the ICC was another very important player there, uh, and so it's very encouraging, I think, to see also the engagement of the T20 um, in this uh, front as well. Think tanks can play a very important role in trade discussions. We have seen that over and over again. Uh, so I'm especially happy that you have the chance. Um, that we have a chance to continue this conversation today, uh, particularly uh, when we're having this very open debate about the future of our work uh, here at the WTO. So, again, there is no doubt that there is a lot of work to do. We're counting on you on that front. Um, we know now, without a doubt, after the successful breakthroughs in Bali and Nairobi, that we can deliver here at the WTO, there's no doubt about that. So the big, so the big question now is, what next? Uh, what comes next? What can we deliver next? And it is clear, I think, that WTO members are not abandoning the Doha round for that. So they still want to deliver on the key issues, agriculture, services, industrial goods, etc. cetera. Uh, you all know that right now they don't know how to do that, so we're still trying to figure out a way. But what is important uh, is that um, we tried, we, we, we tried several approach over the last couple of years. So a lot of ground has, has been covered and we're not giving up. Uh, but members also want to start to discuss other issues, uh, issues which are not the traditional um, focus of the Doha round. And a range of ideas has been have been uh, suggested, such as uh, uh, some steps to support small and medium enterprises, uh, e-commerce, um, investment facilitation, private standards, I heard just in Paris, services facilitation, and man many other areas as well are out there. Uh, fishery subsidies as well, which is kind of a, WTO, um, a Doha issue, but this is also being uh, suggested as a deliverable for the for, for the short term. So in these areas, uh, members have, like I said, not gone into detail. Um, they, they only talk about this broad heading. So what we need now is really specific ideas on, on how um, to move forward. And we don't have that at this point in time. So it's it, it would be very encouraging to hear from you. So if you have ideas, if you have any specific suggestions on how to move forward, that would be very useful and helpful to us. Um, at the trade dialogues, um, so that, that in that event, uh, a wide range um, of idea was put forward. Uh, so those things that I mentioned are the things that members are saying. So at the trade dialogues, also business uh, spent a lot of time talking about e-commerce, investment facilitation, um, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Um, and that helps to provide the kind of clarity that we need at this point in time for the debate. But they raised also many other issues. So those were, they spent a lot of time on those, but they also raised, for example, the need to harmonize uh, regulations across bilateral and regional agreements. So how do we harmonize all those? Um, they also raised the need uh, to be flexible. Uh, in the architecture of potential deals. Uh, flexibility is the key to do deals here in the WTO now. Um, and they also not only thought about the architecture, they also thought that the format, uh, if we can go multilateral, that's a preferred approach. Let's do that. If we cannot, let's go with those who can. Um, so those two avenues are open. And even uh, together, maybe some hybrid, uh, same issue, you go as far as you can multilaterally, where you cannot go any further, you go with those who want to. Uh, and that's another possibility. Um, the trade facilitation agreement has been cited as a model because it's extremely flexible, uh, and it is a multilateral deal uh, as well. 
Um, and, and, and that came with another point that they all made, the businesses, which is um, the need for providing technical assistance. So practical support, um, capacity building, whatever that's needed. So this is also a, an important pillar of the kind of flexibility that we need to strike deals here in the WTO at this point in time. And I know that many of these points have been raised in your uh, discussions today, and I understand also that, uh, in addition, uh, you also uh, put a focus on the need for pragmatism and, and, and to deliver where we can. Um, the need to advance discussions on services, which is something that I also mentioned as, as a possibility. Uh, the importance of digital trade, uh, e-commerce, uh, digital platforms for SMEs. Um, the importance uh, to deliver on the sustainable development goals. And I have the pleasure to say that our uh, elimination of export subsidies for agriculture was the delivery of one very important SDG, so that is 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 uh, uh, something that we are proud of, and of course um, at this stage, like I said, I only heard a very brief uh, uh, comment uh, and report on what you have discussed. I'm looking forward to hear more. Um, and just to conclude, uh, I have been telling members here that we need to move from reflection to action. Right. So we're, we have been thinking that we need to act. Um, and this, um, uh, for that to be done, we have to look at the next uh, points in the horizon. I think a very clear one is the next ministerial conference next year. Um, your contributions can help a lot, a lot, uh, in helping members to focus on the issues that we need to, to address. Academics, uh, policymakers, think tanks have been valuable partner, partners of the WTO for a long time, and I'm really glad to have strengthened this partnership um, today. So I hope uh, we can keep building on this dialogue uh, so that we can deliver uh, new deals um, in the next ministerial conference, even before and in the years ahead. And we count uh, on your support and on the, the thinking of this tank. So thank you all very much. And um, I understand that we have about 10 minutes or so for um, questions, answers, suggestions, criticism, but positive. <laughs> uh, anything you want to raise, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fair game. So yeah. thank you all very much for being here. We, we really appreciate this dialogue. We really do. Thank you so much. Uh, today we have four sessions discussing uh, the, the, the issues uh, regarding the trade and the investment. Uh, panelists and uh, in the discussion raised various questions about the role played by, by WTO uh, in the world regime. Uh, and the, the directions in which the WTO will move forward in the future. Uh, the speech made by uh, Director General Mr. Azevedo, I, I think, uh, answered part of the, the questions. Now we, we open the floor to, to, to the audience. Any questions or comments? Positively, right? Positive, yeah, please. <laughs> uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and also last year we witnessed these uh, uh, climate targets that uh, need to be achieved in uh, 2030. And so what is your position pushing these uh, three agendas uh, uh, towards a convergence? that is a trade agenda and an STG agenda and the climate agenda? Look, I think that the SDG and the climate agenda is it's a it's a global uh, it's a it's a global good uh, common good uh, for humanity. Uh, and I think to the extent that we can get things done in the WTO that helps in that direction, of course, that's something that is desirable. Uh, 
the question is how. Even when we were negotiating the SDGs, and not us here in Geneva, but in New York, um, they were very, uh, they were almost in, 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 I don't want to say in all areas, and in many areas, um, trade was there in one way or another. So there are many ways that we can uh, use trade to help deliver on those uh, goals. Uh, one of them, like I just said, we delivered in, uh, in Nairobi, which with the elimination of the agricultural uh, export subsidies. Um, there is much more that we can do, and I think that some areas um, of development, for example, incorporation of small and medium enterprises, spreading the benefits of trade for the small producer, all those are very important development goals. Um, how we do that, I think it's up also to you to figure out together with the members and us uh, how to um, find issues that move in that direction. Um, and at the end of the day, if we do it right and in the multilateral forum like here, uh, you're always going to have the perspective of those that are developing. Uh, and they are going to be part of the conversation. And of course, that in itself is part of moving the direction of the conversation towards the SDGs. Uh, thank you, Director General, for your um, very um, inspiring keynote, although it's there at the end, but it's still very inspiring um, um, after all. And with your permission, and actually with the permission of uh, uh, Chair um, Mr. John, I would actually would like to address a couple of comments that raised at last session, if possible at all, um, because um, unfortunately I didn't have a chance to address this comments because those were not addressed to me directly, um, but they're very much focused on investment issues, and I think um, it would be great to raise at uh, this um, forum. Um, the, the, the first comment um, uh, is related to um, the, the comment raised by uh, Professor Pollan on the organic convergence of some elements of investment treaties. Um, yes, um, we, we have seen some elements, as Professor Pauling um, correctly identified, um, of a, a convergence of some elements, but, uh, and, and actually that's the reason why we're saying it's, it's a time for um, countries to come up together with some guiding principles. Um, because they're having convergence on those particular issues, for example, the rights, rights to regulate and uh, the, the sovereignty um, issue of the state um, and the uh, social and economic development coherence. But again, let us not forget that although these elements are convergent in some sense, the actual um, language of the treaty are very much so different. And for the countries that are participating in different negotiations, even within different mega-regional negotiations, um, that was less power on the negotiation table, for example, I'm just picking Vietnam as one of the examples that who are participating in TPP, also the RCEP, as well as recently concluded negotiation with EU, um, they're facing with inconsolable obligations even um, with in those um, um, elements. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we, I, I think we're, we're asking you to be brief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so I'm just finalizing, um, just, just concluding my remarks here, that um, the, the existing um, investment uh, treaty regime, as well as the existing investment regime, in, including the treaty contracts and domestic law system that needs to be a coherent, in which we think G20 um, should have a role in playing this, including um, um, promoting for the, for the uh, guiding principle, um, as well as uh, promoting the other uh, developing countries on this issue. Thank you. Very uh, brief questions about the future of uh, WTO uh, multilateral 
negotiation functions. And uh, if we base on the flexibilities uh, on what we can do uh, very pra pragmatically now, and uh, in the future, maybe the uh, functions of multilateral negotiation may be f uh, fragmented. Yeah, only, be, for example, based on case by case, sector by sector, or issue by issues. So my question is that what's the future for the WTO, especially for the function of the multilateral negotiations? Thank you. Are there any other questions? Because if I would rather take them all together and then... Okay. If not, there's one at the bottom, yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I just, I was very inspired and I, I, I think it's a great way forward to, to be flexible, pragmatic, as you were saying, to, to work in smaller groups, to go issue by issue, like-minded countries moving forward. I, I just, I'd like to know from you whether this would only apply for so-called WTO plus elements or whether you think it could also be possible to provide for flexibility, uh, certain trade restrictions, but for good reasons, but only between a subset of WTO members. Does your pra pragmatism go both ways or only one way? Yeah, thank you, Director General. Uh, thanks to Dr. Zhang. Uh, Director General, uh, uh, I have a question uh, on behalf of Idea Center and uh, uh, think tank here in Geneva, representing, not representing, serving the poor and vulnerable countries for many years. Uh, we take note, uh, of course, the, the signal you have been uh, sending out about that uh, after summer we are moving from reflection uh, into action, and then you said a few weeks ago that uh, you are going to lead members into a proposal-driven process. Uh, for our kind of uh, clients, the poor and uh, uh, vulnerable countries, uh, one of their concerns is how do they participate in this kind of more action-oriented process in the future. I just want to, we just want to learn from you how in the next step leading up to MC11, hopefully we could have more deliverables as you, uh, we have done in the past two ministerials, and how to make sure that the uh, small and vulnerable countries are included in the process and also uh, hopefully in the final results of any deliverables in the future. Thanks, Director General. Okay, so I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give so it a go. Five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, four, because one I already addressed. <laughs> so <laughs> um, let me go back. So on, on the investment issues and the, the elements of investment and guiding principles and things like that, um, we have had a, a number of delegations here in, in Geneva showing sympathy for a conversation about investments. Uh, but I also sensed a lot of um, uh, reluctance uh, to agree to talk about investments as well, for different reasons. Um, and I think that um, whenever you go into a conversation which brings back to the kind of investment treaties that we were talking back in 2001 and things like that, like protection of investments, for example, or investor state dispute, uh, that will be very controversial. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it's very unlikely that you will get critical mass in the WTO to go in that direction. Um, it is going to be very um, difficult uh, to convince people that we are mature to have that kind of conversation. Uh, in, in the area of investments, I think, uh, and that's a personal impression. I'm not speaking here on behalf of members or anybody else. This is my personal impression is that the most likely future for a conversation on investments is to take baby steps, just to begin to go one step at a time. I think, for example, uh, some people have been talking about the facilitation of investments. So, for example, guiding principles uh, or um, regulatory framework, transparency, uh, things that give confidence uh, to the investor in terms of regulatory framework, predictability, 
things like that is very important. Some are talking about also the other side of the coin, which is corporate responsibility. Uh, how do the, how, what are the obligations of the investor towards the host country? Uh, and I know that in the OECD, for example, there has been many conversations about that. Um, I think we have to be very careful on how you advance so as to avoid uh, trying to take a step which is too long for our legs. I think if we can begin to build trust on this conversation about investment, investment facilitation, um, coordinating, harmonizing um, uh, practices and, and things like that, I think it's a way forward. Uh, but that, again, I have to stress my personal opinion. Okay, I don't know uh, how far members want to go and uh, what, what, what their appetite is. My feeling tells me that, but I think it's a, the right way forward. Um, we also have seen many different types. When you talk about investment treaties, there are very different types of investment treaty out there. And I think we also have to take a look carefully about what are the commonalities there. Um, some of them have very different focus. So we have to see whether there is a common element that binds them all and that we can begin to, to move in that direction. Um, as for pragmatism and the future of the WTO negotiating function, case by case, sector by sector, and things like that, I, I have to tell you this. Look, I unfortunately have been doing this for a long time, uh, more than I wish I had. But So I was here for in the very early stages of the WTO, and even before the WTO was launched, I was reading about the WTO because I was doing economic stuff and things like that. And I remember distinctly the line that I heard from several economists, several of the thinkers of the WTO, that the WTO was created to eliminate the need for trade rounds. That was the beginning of the WTO. The WTO was to serve as a permanent standing body for negotiations. And negotiations would happen in areas where members identified the need to have negotiations. That was the purpose of the WTO. That was the whole rationale behind, behind the WTO. What happened was that six years after that, there was a new round being launched. Now, which defeated the purpose to begin with, right? I think that if we go back, if we recognize that the round uh, had difficulties, limitations, and that we're still trying to figure th those out, but if we recognize that going to a case-by-case -case or sector-by-sector -sector analysis, we're not backtracking. We're just doing <laughs> what we were meant to do to begin with. So I don't see a problem with that. The problem that people have with the round is not because the round itself, I, my view, huh, is not that the round itself failed. It's because very important issues which are in the round are not advancing, like domestic subsidies, for example, in agriculture. Um, if, if you can handle those issues outside the round, I'm sure most members are going to be happy. The purpose of the round was to have enough issues on the table so that you could manage to have trade-offs to help with those very difficult issues. But if you can handle those difficult issues without necessarily having a round on a case-by-case -case or sector-by-sector, -sector, a trade-off that shows up at a certain point in time, I don't think that's a problem. I think we're doing what we're meant to do. So that kind of pragmatism, that kind of, uh, of um, delivery on a, on a permanent, constant, frequent basis on small things in small areas or things like that, that's exactly what the WTO was created to do. So I, I don't see a problem with that. I think we're going back to our origins, frankly. Um, and then I go to the question of about uh, whether that pragmatism goes uh, both ways. The pragmatism goes wherever members want it to go. If they want, the, I think if you are building on the rules, and you're complementing the rules, it's easier than if you are backtracking on the rules. Of course, for some, they see it as backtracking, others see it as advancement. 
Um, we have now the, the issue of um, two very important issues in agriculture, the special safeguards mechanism. We have the public stock holding. Some see it as an advancement. Others see it as, 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 as going back. Um, but it's perception. Uh, each one has their perceptions. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time to be absolutely pragmatic. I think uh, you go forward where you find consensus. If there is consensus, you're moving forward because it's something that members agreed that is necessary, that is convenient, that is um, helpful. And therefore, they're moving forward. It's because they recognize that the rules needed adaptations. Uh, but you need consensus for everything we do here, especially if you are going in those contentious areas. So I, I'm very pragmatic. Whatever they want to go, I go. Uh, I just facilitate and try to see whether we can advance. To build on things which are already there is obviously easier, obviously easier. So, but where they go, I think it's, 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 an, open, uh, it's an open book. Um, and how to ensure that the small and, and vulnerable countries participate more? I think um, it's a tough question uh, because it's not only, they all, of course, they all have a seat at the table. They all participate in the meetings. It's not only about that. It's not only giving them the seat. It's helping them to be active. It's difficult to have, and look, I, I, I worked in the Brazilian mission before as a secretary, uh, then as ambassador. We had 17, 18 diplomats doing WTO only, only. You see delegations with two people doing all international organizations in Geneva. You can't possibly expect that delegation to be in a position to participate technically, intensely, in all the discussions that are happening in Geneva. It's just impossible. So it's not an easy proposition. I have often met with them, and I have suggested, for example, a division of labor. I say, you know, organize yourselves. And you, if you have similar interests, for example, you get uh, one each mission doing one particular issue in the WTO. Because then you, instead of uh, trying to cover eight, seven, nine committees, each mission um, concentrates in one. And together, you, 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 you regularly sit down and coordinate positions on a general level. But e each one of you goes specifically to one area. Um, going into rules, for example, anti-dumping, CVD, safeguards, and all that, so that's extremely complex. If you, one person will have a hard time in a, in, in a full plate doing just that. Um, and the same goes for IP and, uh, and trips and, and, and so on and so forth. So it's difficult to tell. We try to provide training. <laughs> So we have a training courses that we get people from capital because it's not only about people here in, in Geneva. You also need to train people in capital as well. Um, I think we're taking strides and we're making progress. Somehow we're making progress because I noticed that uh, when I, when I um, arrived here in 1997 uh, and I left in 2001 back to Brasilia, um, I don't think I ever heard an intervention from Tanzania, for example, or any other, you know, a small Pacific Islands. They were not even here. Now they have missions in Geneva. And more than that, they participate and they say things. Um, they are very m much more focused, for example, on issues like fishery subsidies, which is very important for them. Um, but in other trade facilitation is important for them as well. So. I, th I see today a lot more interventions, a lot more participation, engagement. Uh, the seat is occupied. Often you just see the flag. Nobody's sitting at the chair. Uh, I see the seats occupied and they're sitting and listening. I think that's a learning process as well. Uh, we try to do what we can, uh, but we also help uh, get the help of donors. I think they also help with um, capacity building programs that we implement and we have um, the donors uh, helping with the financial resources to bring people from capital. 
even to pay for the participation in ministerial conferences. They also help with that. Um, programs that we develop here, especially in the uh, enhanced integrated framework, they also participate. The trade facilitation um, um, uh, agreement facility also gets you know, support from the donors. That's very important too. Um, but it's not something that you can solve just like that. It's going to take time. But I think we're making progress, slowly, but we're making progress. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Azevedo you know, elaborate uh, on the functions of the WTO, the vision, the mission, and the progress the WTO is making or has made in the past you know, several decades. Uh, he, uh, in his uh, speech, he uh, you know, e expect very much you know, good ideas from uh, think tanks. Uh, we do you know, produce, produce ideas, but I'm not sure uh, whether they are you know, good or, or not good or bad. But we will try our best to, to produce, to deliver good ideas to the decision maker, decision makers of uh, uh, different countries and uh, you know, to the uh, international organizations like the WTO. Um, after, after this uh, conference, we are going to compile, compile minutes of the, of, of, of the you know, panelists and the discussions. And the minutes will be uh, available on the website of T20 China. Uh, we hope we can be of great help to uh, policymakers, to uh, the international organizations, including the WTO. Uh, now, let me close. Let me close this special session by inviting all participants of this conference to give applause to Mr. Azero for uh, Azevedo for for his. Uh, you know, wonderful and uh, insightful uh, uh, speech.